Many beginner devs feel uncomfortable using this CLI. And if you really want to feel like a programming noob, just ask a senior dev to move quickly around his or her terminal. In this short video, we're going to look at four popular CLI tools to help you gain more confidence. You ready? Let's jump in. FZF or Fuzzy Find helps you quickly locate files in your system without having to memorize a bunch of complicated syntax. On macOS, I'll use Homebrew to install it, but the repo includes other installation options if you prefer or need a different method. Now, once I restart my terminal, if I type FZF without any other arguments, it will list out every file in my current directory. Next, if I start typing, I can Fuzzy Find files that match my entered string. By default, this just prints the file name to the command line, which isn't very helpful. But you can easily pipe this to another command. For instance, let's use the code command and then pipe whatever argument we end up with from our fuzzy find to open this file in VS Code. The real benefit here is you don't have to memorize the exact file name. Just type something you think is close to the name and FCF will locate it. Zoxide is a smarter CD command that's simple to use. It quick jumps you to any frequently accessed and recent directory with a simple search. And it works really well with FCF. To install it, you'll need to add the binary to your system. Just find your operating system and pick your preferred install method. I'll use Homebrew for macOS. Next, you'll need to add Zoxide to your shell. The repo lists details for all the major shells. Since I'm using ZSH, I'll add the following to my .zshrc file. This tells ZSH to load the file each time you interact with your shell. That's it. Restart your terminal to get started. So what can Zoxide do? Well, nothing by default. You have to trade it first by moving around your file system using the Z command in place of the CD command. Normally, when moving to a new directory, you always have to provide the full path. But Zoxide's memory can make intelligent guesses based on my previous directory changes. So instead of providing a full path, like Websites Clients 2024 landing page, I can instead use path fragments, like Z Clients landing page. That's it. That's a lot better than having to memorize folder locations. Zoxide includes one other feature that makes it a hundred times better, interactive mode. And you have to install Fuzzy Find first, which we just did. Now, instead of using the Z, use the ZI command and press return for interactive mode. This shows all the directories you've moved to with Zoxide. Start typing to narrow the results and then select one with your keyboard. If you're sold on Zoxide, I recommend remapping CD to use Zoxide on your system instead. Just update the init command in your config file to include the CMD and pass CD as the value. Now you can use CD to move around your system or CDI for interactive mode and your shell will use Z behind the scenes. Bat is a modern version of cat used for viewing file content with syntax highlighting, Git integration, and more. On macOS, you can install it using Homebrew. You can verify installation with the bat command and the version flag. Bat supports nearly any file type. At its most basic, view files with full syntax highlighting. You can also pass an option to show non-printing characters, making it easy to track spaces, tabs, and line breaks. If your file changes have been tracked with Git, you can even pass a specific commit to bat to see that commit with full syntax highlighting. JQ or JSON Query is an absolute workhorse. It's a CLI tool for reading, writing, and manipulating JSON data. Download it for your system. So for macOS, I'll use Homebrew. At its simplest, pass any file to get a full readout. For a compact readout, pass the C flag. But let's do more than just read the data. You'll notice each object has an ID property. I can extract just the ID by passing the entire array and then picking off just the ID field. Even better, I can return these as raw values with the R flag. You'll notice that because my data file is an array string, I'll need to first mark it with the dot array before picking off a property. JQ can do more than just read. You can actually write whole new data structures using the tool. If we read the file again, you'll notice a few properties. Let's pick off just the IDs and the errors arrays. This time, we'll pipe the entire array into a new object with two properties, new ID and errors. This returns back 535 lines of content. How cool is that? But notice that some of our errors arrays are empty. Before we create the new object, let's use the select function to first select any objects with error arrays longer than zero. Then we'll pipe the results into the same new object query. That puts us down to 391 lines, as it's eliminated 
all the objects without error codes. The point here is not to memorize all the syntax, but rather know what's available to you so you can look it up in the documentation or ask AI to generate the command for you. Let's look at just one more example of mapping over data and using a filter to add up its items. And again here, AI may help. Like I said before, JQ is crazy powerful. You can always write the results to a new file. Using the CLI effectively can not only speed you up, but give you a lot more confidence as a developer. What other CLI tools do you like? And do you want us to do more videos like this? Let us know in the comments below.